Lord Jesus, we thank you that you will never fail us and you will never forsake us as we face many trials, great difficulties in this world and oppositions from the world to our Christian faith. Father, we ask and pray, therefore, that our eyes would be fixed firmly upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that the Lord Jesus would be our first love, bearing in mind that he died for us, that he loved us, that he gave himself for us, that he laid down his life for us upon the cross, and that he has taken it up again. We worship the eternal God, Father, Son, and Spirit. We ask for the forgiveness of our sins, and we do so in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Welcome to the Spurgeon's Devotional Podcast, a Christian podcast desiring to honour the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the devotion for June the 2nd. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Spurgeon says this he knew, but the impressive circumstance was mentioned to awaken his mind to a sense of his own responsibility and the need of his at once to proceed in to act. The deaths of good men are calls to others to bestir themselves. Sp- sorry, the Bible continues. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Spurgeon says this was easier said than done, but Joshua's faith staggered not. He knew that the Lord was master of the river as he had been of the sea. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Spurgeon says, Here were exceeding great and precious promises to cheer him, a promise of conquest in war, guidance upon the judgment seat, and a blessing for himself personally. The Lord abounds in tender promises. May he, by the Holy Spirit, speak home some gracious word to our hearts. It would be a joy indeed to hear him say, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Spurgeon says, The oath and covenant of God are a main state of faith. Hence the Lord mentions them to his servant. There is no better rock of confidence than the immutable promise of a faithful God. Verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Spurgeon says it seems then that it needs strength and courage to to be obedient to God. Some count the godly cowards but the Holy Spirit thinketh not so. He is a brave man who is afraid to sin and he is a hero who flees youthful lusts which war against the soul. Note that Joshua was to avoid a turn to the right hand as much as a turn to the left. We are no more permitted to offend with the view of doing more good than with the idea of doing mischief. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Spurgeon says, talk about it. Scripture says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Spurgeon says, think about it. Scripture continues that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Spurgeon says, practice it. Scripture continues, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Spurgeon says, rejoice in it. So just to repeat what Spurgeon has said there about this book of the law, about the Bible. Talk about it, think about it, practice it, rejoice in it. Spurgeon continues, Before the Lord, obedience is prosperity, and transgression is a root of bitterness. In order to practical obedience, however, there must be a delight in the Lord's law. Those who forget to meditate soon cease to obey. In fact, their heart has never been truly in accord with the divine statutes. Verse 9, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage, 
Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Spurgeon says, Where God's command is our authority, we can afford to be bold. Who shall gainsay us when the Lord of hosts gives us leave? Fear in such a case is dishonour to our invincible commander. When the Lord is on his side, confidence is, but the reasonable condition of a believing man. By faith I on thy strength lay hold, and walk in Christ my way, divinely confident and bold, thy precepts to obey. I would perform thy utmost will with heart most fixed and true, and dare to follow onward still where Jesus bids me go. Amen. And just thinking about the words divinely confident, which are present in that uh, hymn we just read and um, the, the line divinely confident and bold I think that is referring to our confidence in God and his dealings with us